Welcome to the video on running behavior error reports and correcting issues in Infinite Campus. When running the reports, if the report comes up blank, that means that there are no errors. We will discuss two reports in this video, the JCPS Attendance versus Behavior Error Report and the JCPS Behavior Cleanup Report. Now we will begin discussing the reports and how to correct the errors. The first report we will talk about is the JCPS Attendance versus Behavior Error Report. This is located under Behavior Reports. You will select your location and click to view report. If the report comes up blank, there are zero errors. If errors display, that means there are behavior records that do not match the attendance records. Work with your attendance clerk to determine the issue and correct it. When suspensions or ISEP records are entered, they should only be entered and edited from the behavior incident and not the student's attendance tab. This is what causes the mismatch in many instances. The next report we will discuss is the JCPS Behavior Cleanup Report. This is also located under Behavior Reports. Again, if the report comes up blank, there are zero errors. If errors display, please correct all necessary errors. To run this report, you will select your school year. You will just choose Select All for the academic area. The other options are for district level staff. For locations, you will select your school. And then under the event filters, you will choose Select All or you will select specific errors. Next, you will click View Report. We will begin by discussing these four errors. You may pause this video at any time if you need to review the data on any particular slide. The first error we will discuss is Error 1, State Resolutions Without a Start, End Date, or Time. Most of the resolutions listed here require a start or end date and time upon entering the resolution in Infinite Campus, and you can't save the resolution without entering this information. If missing, to correct the issue, open the incident, Click on the resolution, don't click Add Resolution, enter the dates or times that are missing, change the status from In Progress to Complete, and click Save. The next issue we will discuss is Error 3, No Participant Selected. Each behavior incident must include a participant, event, and resolution. To correct this, open the incident, click on the event, don't click Add Event Participant, search for and select the student, and click Save. Be sure to also change the status from In Progress to Complete and click Save. The next error we'll discuss is Error 4, Behavior Resolution Outside of Selected Calendars or Enrollments. This locates all incidents where the resolution date or time span is outside of the student's enrollments. Many times this is by accident where the user mistyped the year, for example, 2022 instead of 2020. To correct this, open the incident, click on the resolution, don't click Add Resolution, correct the dates and times, change the status from In Progress to Complete, and click Save. The next error we're discussing is suspension attendance without corresponding behavior resolution. All suspension attendance records should only be created and edited from within the behavior resolution. No SSP3 records should be added, edited, or removed from the Attendance tab. This error locates suspension attendance records with no corresponding behavior resolution dates or times. Review the attendance record and the behavior record and correct as necessary. The attendance record might need to be removed altogether. The behavior record might have incorrect dates and need to be corrected, which will generate an attendance record. Click Check for Attendance Conflicts in the Behavior Resolution. Rerun the report after making corrections to verify everything matches. Next, we will discuss the following behavior warnings. Just a reminder, you can pause this video at any point in time that you need to review a particular slide. The first warning we'll discuss is Warning 1. SSP Resolution exists outside of SSP Attendance Event. This locates any instances where an SSP3 behavior resolution was recorded and was not connected to an attendance event. How to correct it? Open the incident, click on the resolution, don't click Add Resolution, select Suspended from the Attendance Code dropdown, work with the attendance clerk to remove any incorrect attendance entries as necessary. Be sure to always click Save, change the progress from In Progress to Complete, and then click Save again when completing a behavior incident. Now we will discuss Warning 2 and Warning 5, which is Restraint or Seclusion with a Missing Response or Resolution. Every restraint or seclusion must include both a response and a resolution. To correct it, open the incident, click on Add Resolution or Add Response, and add the missing response or resolution. Refer to the Behavior Manual as necessary for additional details on recording restraints and seclusions in Infinite Campus. Be sure to change the status from In Progress to Complete and click Save when finished with the behavior incident. The next warning we'll discuss is Behavior Resolution Start Date Not Within a District Enrollment. Use the same directions as Error 4 to correct this warning. This usually occurs when an incorrect start date was entered to be a date the student wasn't enrolled in the school. Open the incident, click on the resolution, correct the dates, 
Hit Save, change the status from In Progress to Complete, and click Save to exit the behavior incident. Now we will discuss the remaining four behavior issues covered in this behavior cleanup report. The first one, Events with no resolution, locates all behavior incidents where the resolution has not yet been added. Every behavior incident must contain an event, participant, and resolution. To correct it, click on the incident, click on Add Resolution, complete the incident as necessary, change the status to Complete, and click Save. The next one locates all bully harassment events with no victim or reason. Every bully harassment event must include a victim or reason. If the victim is unknown or cannot be attached, this error will not clear. If this is the case, verify that the information regarding the victim and the situation is documented in the behavior incident. Be sure to not include additional names in the incident. To add a victim, click on the incident, add a participant, and identify the role as victim instead of offender. In the example below, the victim is a school employee. Complete the incident as necessary, change the status to complete, and click Save. The next one, Resolution Range Covers Non-Instructional Days, usually occurs when school is canceled and the behavior resolutions aren't yet adjusted to reflect the new resolution days. To correct this, click on the incident, click on the resolution, enter the correct dates and times, and click Save. Check for attendance conflicts if necessary. Change the status from In Progress to Complete, and click Save. The next one, Partial Day Resolutions Covering Multiple Days, checks for partial day resolutions that span across multiple days. This may not fall off the report if the data is actually correct, but it is sometimes entered this way in error. The directions for correcting this, if it is incorrect, are the same as for the error 3, OTH3. If it is incorrect, click on the incident, click on the resolution, enter the correct dates and times, and click Save. Check for attendance conflicts, if necessary, change the status from In Progress to Complete, and click Save again. This concludes the video on behavior cleanup and error reports. Please contact the Office of Student Relations at 485-3335 with any behavior questions or concerns.